When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here are your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and me, Don Priest. Hello, I'm Susie Singer-Carter. And I'm Don Priest. And this is Love Conquers Alls. It An- is. Another edition. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, this- Susan? <laughs> I'm doing great. We have a new platform, and I'm yes. so excited because now you guys can hear us better and see us better. Well, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We're guessing how, that's going to happen. How much sleep I've had. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that may be a bad thing for me, too. <laughs> Who wants more detail? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But did I mention I designed this hat? Did I have I mentioned? Yeah, I that? think you have yeah. deme- uh, mentioned that. De- dementia and, uh, <laughs> and dementia. Dimensioned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a new word. I like it. I dimensioned it. Um, yeah. Hey, if you guys, you know what? What's wrong with a little swag? Why is it wrong? It's nothing. Not that we've ever, you know, shown it before. But oh, yes, we have. Look at that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and there's plenty it's co- more. It's coffee, and five yeah. percent goes to. Alzheimer's Los Angeles, yes. so which is a very good cause, and they are my fa- one of my favorite um, nonprofit organizations that really, 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 really concentrate on the caregiver and gives them so much support. So you would be doing what they say in France, a mitzvah. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> huzzah! Indeed, okay. huzzah! So we have, you know what, Don? We have a guest today who. Um, it's so funny because when we were first making our movie, My Mom and the Girl, we were desperate for money. We didn't know how, because I've never raised money before, and I absolutely hate it. And <laughs> and so I was trying to figure out how to finagle enough money to make a, this film that we wanted to make. And I discovered this this uh, fund, the, the Bob and Diane fund. Did I say it right? Fund, yeah. I think it is the Bob and Diane Fund, yes. Right. And um, Don's going to introduce the woman who is behind all this magic. But, um, you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to so get this fund. But, you know, (laughs) 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 apparently there's other people worthy. No, I'm teasing. No, it was I was so happy to see something like that out there because hardly any of, you know, no one's really directing money to make to uh, to really extend the conversation and, and fo- put the focus on this situation on Alzheimer's and dementia. And I was just, I was so blown away by that. And um, I believe actually in all, in all sincerity, I believe they're concentrated on, on photography and not yes. film, but um, yeah. I, I really do. I really do commend that. I think it's just so spectacular. It's like, we keep finding them the most extraordinary people Right. It's like Lisa Gibbons said, you, you do what you know, and that's, that's the best you can do. So apparently Gina Martin, who's our next guest has been doing what she knows for the past five years, which is Donald. It's amazing. And, and Gina Martin, yeah, she is the, uh, the founder and executive director of the Bob and Diane fund. And uh, she worked with national geographic for 21 years. And there she learned the importance of visual mediums and the effect that they can have on perceptions and policy. And that knowledge led her to the creation of the Bob and Diane Fund. It's a unique and powerful award that honors photographers and the art of visual storytelling about Alzheimer's and dementia. And with that said, let's welcome in Hi, thank you for that wonderful introduction. It's so nice to meet you finally, because I've been seeing, you know, you, I, I think your fund must have started right was was it the first or second year of it the when we first st- were starting to you know actually put pen to paper on this project that we did mm-hmm. and so we've kind of grown i kind of kept my eye on you and what you've been doing and then you reached out to me which was so great and 
And I, th- I felt honored. So thank you. For oh, thank out. you. I remember when you applied. Yeah, we were desperate to raise money. And I know that's something that you had gone through trying to figure out, you know, how to how do you do what you want to do? And it's always a challenge. And you found a very unique way of doing it. Yeah, uh, thank you. So I started the Bob and Diane Fund in 2016. And that was about um, four years after my mom passed away. Um, Mm -hmm. And my mom was diagnosed at 65, which is quite young. And um, I remember when um, my dad took her to the doctors and he saw shrinkage of the brain. So we kind of knew what that, what, that entailed and what our future was going to be. So um, for the first few years, it wasn't so bad. It Maybe the first two to three, and it was the last two years. Um, I, I do always say, luckily, my mom only lived with Alzheimer's for five years, which really wow. isn't that long. Um, wow. And the last two years were getting difficult. My dad was her sole caregiver and he was amazing. They'd been married just shy of 50 years. They were high school sweethearts, had a good marriage. And um, I was living 3,000. I live in Washington, D.C. And my whole family's in the Bay Area of California. So I, you know, we were all very involved, even me 3,000 miles away. I talked to them every day, knew their appointments, all of that. And then my mom in... um, 2011 was um, diagnosed with cancer. And um, the doctor said she's got maybe three months. And my dad at that point was very close to putting her into a facility, a care home. And we immediately said, let's keep her at home for these last few months. And she passed away um, a month and a half later. So in a way, um, I know it sounds strange to say, but in a way, cancer was a bit of a blessing because she died knowing who we were. Yeah. And I, feel- I was just going to say that, mm-hmm. Gina. I was I was going to say, I'm glad you said it first, but I was thinking the same thing because my mom's had Alzheimer's for almost 15 years now. Oh my, yeah. So is- I haven't, I haven't had her. I haven't had my mom for 15 years. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it was... We didn't, like I said, she died knowing who we were, and we didn't have to put her in the caregiving home, which, you know, it's such a tough decision for every family. And I do not, you know, I completely understand the reasonings needing to do that, but I'm just glad we ended up not having to. So um, she died on Halloween 2011, and three months later, um, my parents were seven days apart. And her birthday was February 4th. His was February 11th. And it was their first birthdays not together since they were 17, I think. And on my dad's birthday on February 11th, um, he went to dinner with my brother and his wife. And they brought the dessert. He made a wish, blew out the candle, and he dropped dead within the hour. Um, And he, I mean... That is, that's love, though. That's I, the power I of love. I absolutely think it was the yeah. perfect ending to their love story. He yeah. definitely wanted to be with her. Um, but it was a shock for I, us to lose both of them within sure. three months. Um, oh, my God, yes. Yeah. That's, 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 t- that's a lot. It was. But, you know, I mourned my mom during her illness much more than my siblings did, I think. I just, it was so hard for me when she was sick. When they both passed, I really handled it in a way I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd handle it. But I was very grateful for them that I had them for 43 years. I had amazing parents and Mm -hmm. I celebrated them and I still do. I celebrated them much more than I mourned them. Um, I mean, I definitely had some cries, but not Mm -hmm. as much as I would have thought. Um, I just... It's because you leaned in. You I did. You leaned into it. The, yeah. And I just never... My best friend's father died of Pick's disease years before my mom, and she handled it with such grace. And I remember telling her mm-hmm. that, and I said, oh my God, you will have to put me in a home if my parents pass away. Didn't I say that? I say that yeah. all the time. And she I say said that she's and, jumping in with her if she, if, when yeah, her but, mom but goes. I th- <laughs> uh, but I say my mother give, gave is has given me the gift of 
of a long ramp, uh, like a long rampway to give me, to let, allow me to become accustomed and used to it. And when she goes, I'm going to just walk her across the bridge. Oh, I, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I just never thought I'd handle it that way. But I surprised, I surprised myself. And, um, to this day, I celebrate them every day. I am. Yeah. So proud. Uh, and, I'm gonna. I'm gonna make me teary. That's oh, just so beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's also. A, I mean, it's. It sounds odd, but it's a. It's a gift to, to have them not suffer anymore. You know. Oh, to, yeah. Um, completely. You know, that's, and that's. You have to celebrate that. You know, yeah. The fact and that I they're never, not in pain anymore. Yeah, I did not want my dad to live long without my mom. My mom yeah. could have lived without my dad, and that would have been much easier on us, because she was much more. Um, she would have been on the first airplane traveling. And um, so <laughs> sounds like my mom. I know. <laughs> so I was grateful that they were together. I really was. I, I think it's a beautiful ending to a beautiful love story. It yeah. sounds amazing, right? Because it, it's, it's, it's appropriate. It's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Exactly. And so then you honored them with this, with this mm -hmm. fund. Yeah, in their honor, so you were, you, which is you were, so, so beautiful. So you were working, yeah, you were working at National Geographics at the time, or before, yes, yeah, or, a bit, it'll yeah. be twenty-one years in January. So and, tell us that how that tied into what where you so are, what led to the fund. I worked with the um, photo agency, so I licensed National Geographic photography, and I've been doing it for most of my career there. And I love photography. Um, I work with it and then I support photographers. Um, oh. I buy their books. I buy their prints. I They stay at my house when they're in Washington, D.C. I own 950 photography books. I have a huge wow. collection of prints. And you I must just, meet my daughter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my I daughter is a, she's an art, she's at the Art Institute in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. yeah and and, that, and she got in with, with her photography scholarship. Oh, I would love yeah. to. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, okay. yeah, so I love, you know, I really love supporting photographers. It's such a tough, it's love a it. very difficult um, career to make a living and to get their work out there. All so, artists, right? Yes, all artists. absolutely. I mean, we all need advocates and champions like yes. you. I mean, we need that. Otherwise, we, we because artists can't champion themselves. They yes. just can't, yes. Is that, right? So I love to um, share their works on my social media, all of that. So in 2016, I had some extra money and I thought, oh, you know, I should think about giving some money to some photographers and see if I could help them. And I was discussing this with a friend of mine and he said, why don't you do a grant for work on Alzheimer's and name it after your mom? And I just was shocked that it I never thought of that on my own. So I started right that day and I decided to name it after both of them. My dad is her caregiver. I needed to honor him as well. So the Bob and Diane fund was literally created that night and then talked to a friend about it. And she's like, well, you're going to have to start a nonprofit and have get a board and bylaws. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to write a check every year. She's like, no, no, no. That's not how it works. <laughs> and I always say, that if I knew then what I know now, I never would have done this ever <laughs> because I never would have thought I could create a nonprofit and keep it going the way I have because it's a lot of work. This is what's so wonderful about you because, you know, we all, so many people say they have, they have a lot of emotion towards something and an event in their life, like, like we have with our parents and, mm -hmm. and, you want to do something and you don't think that you can, you get overwhelmed with the details, but you really have that motivation to do it. Like the film, I didn't want to do it, honest to God. Yeah. I was like, well, who needs another Alzheimer's film, right? Like, like tr I just didn't think it was worth the time yep. and, and whether I could handle it, you know, um, it, living in that world again, over and over and over. So, but then, you know, it's, it's, you can do it. And you can by just doing it and putting one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. and, you know, things that we can't, we, you can surprise yourself. And that, that motivation is so powerful when it's yes. based on love. You're absolutely and right. And it's also, pal it's palpable. Like it, it, it resonates with everybody else when it's done in an authentic way. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I could not have done it without very dear friends helping me and walking me through it. I mean, 
And I'm so grateful for that. So it's been five years. And what the, what the grant does, it's, it supports visual storytelling to bring a visual awareness to a disease that is so misunderstood. And what yes. I will reference Alzheimer's more, but it is for Alzheimer's and all dementia um, forms. I just know that so many people do not understand this disease unless you've lived with it. And I wanted to yeah, bring this visual awareness worldwide. So immediately we decided to make the grant worldwide. Mm -hmm. And when I started it in 2016, I had absolutely no idea how, what work was out there, not a clue or how I was going to get it out there, like get the word out. So I didn't know if there would be five projects the first year or a hundred. And I thought if there's only five, maybe I'll do this every other year. And I was very fortunate um, that time.com announced the grant. Um, oh, so Wow, we, that's huge. I know. I was so fortunate. <laughs> and we launched it in August, the end of August. And we accept submissions through October. And then we always announce the winner in November, which is National Caregivers Month. And that part is to honor my dad. Um, so our first year we received probably 73 submissions from 25 countries and we were just blown away because the, yeah. it was announced on time, but it was all social media. That was it. Yeah. That was my only form of getting it out there. And I wasn't um, as involved in the Alzheimer's dementia community at that point at all. I was building, building it slowly. I probably had five people following me on Twitter. Um, so it was, you know, it was just word of mouth. It's very inspirational for everybody to oh, know that because, you. yeah, I mean, same, I feel, I feel like we did the same thing because we didn't, I mean, I wasn't even on Twitter before, you know, and so I had to learn as we go. And isn't it so much work? It's so much work. It's mm -hmm. so much, it's so much work. It's like, I, yeah, so, but, but it's, it's so much work. It. I mean, I work on it every day. No, I mean, it's interesting because your mother actually died of cancer. Correct. Was that was that ever a consideration? It's like, oh, but it was always Alzheimer's. And and tell us tell us why. <laughs> I feel like I am a daughter of Alzheimer's. Period. Um, she had cancer, but she had it for such a short time. I mean, from diagnosis yeah. to death was under two months. Um, mm -hmm. And. It was all about the Alzheimer's and the Alzheimer's just changed our whole family and the dynamic and how we communicated and our future, everything. So I always say I am a daughter of Alzheimer's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I say that, the yeah. same. Yeah. I say the same thing. I, I've spoken to, we've, we've interviewed other women who feel like we're daughters and sisters now of Alzheimer's yes, because yes because we hold each other's hands and, you know, and it's, it's interesting that you say that because it's, it's, it, it just goes to, to, it speaks to how overwhelming Alzheimer's and dementia is. And, and, you know, that someone could have cancer that's, you know, it, it overtakes everything. It, it becomes, does. it, ecl it eclipses everything in your life and in the person's life mm -hmm. because to, to not have your, your, mental capabilities, you know, your cognitive abilities is, is, is not, is not living the way we know life. And so you either adjust how you live that life. Mm -hmm. And for most of us, we're, we're stumbling through it and trying to figure it out because we we're not educated in it. Yeah, because you're right with Alzheimer's, you really have to change the way your family interact, like the way you interact with this person, you are now living in their life. Um, it's an everyday situation. And whereas maybe other, well, when my mom had cancer, it just didn't change anything for us, how we were going to interact with her. Um, but I was going to say, when I decided to start this, one thing I had told myself is I didn't want, I didn't plan on being an advocate. I was never going to go on Capitol Hill and advocate for Alzheimer's because even though I love politics and I live in DC, the, I just, that wasn't really my area. And I'm amazed that, granted, I haven't gone on Capitol Hill to advocate yet, 
but how much I feel like I'm now an advocate through social and how much I talk to people and I go to conferences and I've, I speak on it now and I'm doing podcasts and I'm talking to a lot of friends, especially who are now going through it and giving them advice. So something again, that I never thought I would do, I have done and I love it. I, you know, I think it's, um, I mean, anyone who has any experience with um, this disease should share their knowledge with others who are new to it because it's so mm -hmm. scary and so um, overwhelming. It's yeah. daunting. And no one's yeah. gonna, yeah. No one's gonna read a book about it before they. You know, it's like I'm gonna read this book about this. So before I even know, I have to go through it. Exactly. So it's you're you. Everyone learns as they go through yeah. it because you know there's you're, there's no courses that you take. It doesn't exist, and no one would do it. Yes, no, <laughs> so I know. We are, it's a yeah. constant progressing moment by moment education, and and also the more different. People share. <laughs> yeah, it's different yeah. for everybody too. And the same too. It there's, most, there's it's same and same. Different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same, same, but different. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I love find, that. Same, same, but different. I know. Um, <laughs> I find it's most, mostly the same. When someone mm -hmm. tells me an experience they had, I was like, oh my gosh, did we go through that? Yes. Especially with yeah. eating and um, hygiene and, you know, so many things is so similar. Um, but yeah. And it's really, trying to explain to my, well, I'll just speak for when I'm talking to my friends that you have to now live in their world. You are not going to change them and you have mm -hmm. to accept it. You have to accept it and change the way you interact with them yep. from your tone, the way you communicate with them to, um, you know, saying, Oh, I already explained this to you. You don't say that. Okay. <laughs> if you don't know your Wi Fi, then, or social security number, if your mother is, you know, calling her doctor or needs information, put that, tape it somewhere where she can get to it. I don't care how many times you've told her. Like, you need to change the way you communicate with this, with the person. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's one thing that I'm always. That's the yeah. lean in. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's what I see. Yeah. I always say the lean in is because I, I, you know, again, repeating, but it's, you know, mm -hmm. I, I tell my mom and I are so close and she's such a pistol. And I would, I, when she first was diagnosed, I just said, don't worry about it. We're going to, we're going to knock this one out because, you know, I got your back. We're, and I thought I was going to talk her out of it. You know, I, I kept reminding yeah. her, mom, you have Alzheimer's, but don't worry. We're going to get through this. I was right. researching and all these things. I was going to find we'll the cure it. for her. We'll fix it. Yeah. Cause it, if there's a will, there's a way, you know, and I would say, what day is it? Who, who's that? She, and my mom is always funny. So she did, you know, she used her wit a lot, you know, I was like, who is that? Oh, um, or if I'd say, do you know who I am? You are so beautiful to me. <laughs> she would always, cause she was a singer. So she would sing to everybody. And that was her way of like skirting around it, yeah. you know, and if you have, and so anyways, but we, you know, at the end of the day, I realized, what am I doing? I have to like live in her world. Mm -hmm. And then my whole life changed because I found all the silver linings that mm -hmm. were to be found. And mm -hmm. I love her so much. And I love her this way as much as I did before mm. the other way. Oh, that's yeah. Well, 15 years. I mean, that is a long time. Yeah. yeah. We switched roles. <laughs> we switched roles. I'm yeah. mommy now. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And I don't mind. Yeah. You talked about the commonality that, you know, of the disease and also how it's different. But so when you see the photographs that are submitted and the essays that are submitted, do you find there's a commonality there? That there's something that you'd say, wow, that is a uh, that is a theme or a or a visual that almost everybody has. Um, yes and no. So going with the same, same, <laughs> but different. Um, yes. So this we just gave our grant to our fifth grantee um this month and they've all been different but there's still that common thread and theme to each one so i'll back up a little bit our first grantee in 2016 was maya daniels she is a swedish photographer and did this gorgeous story on um a hospital in Northern France that had a protective unit for the patients there, the people living with dementia. And it was a closed door with two windows that kept the 
this protective unit separate from the rest of the hospital. And she was able to get inside the protective unit and photograph the people mostly standing at that door, looking through the window, trying to open the door, um, waiting for their loved ones who they thought were going to pick them up, which most likely they were not. And sprinkled within it were um, beautiful detail shots of the people, you know, of their clothes or what they were eating and their the wallpaper in the room. And But m- most of it centered around the door of the protective unit. And this was a project that she, it wasn't a family member. And it was more, um, it wasn't as documentary as I thought I would be drawn to, but I loved this work. Um, it was definitely touching and sad to see these people sitting at a door with all their bags and belongings waiting for their loved ones. But that's also, as I say, Alzheimer's is not pretty. And, you know, that is what it can be when people are in, you know, certain Mm -hmm. facilities. So it was a beautiful first project. I loved that she was our first grantee. We got wonderful press from it. Um, Time.com announced the winner. And then the New York Times published it in print, Huffington Post, NPR, and papers across the world. Um, We were very fortunate because it's the only first and only grant of its kind. But my whole purpose is for this to go viral. I want all this. I want this work to really get published and out there for people to see. And then our second year in 2017 was Chris Nunn, who's a British photographer. And Chris's was of a a project of um, someone who lived in his city, in the town he lived in. He had met him, I think, in a grocery store and um, either knew or discovered that he had um, a dementia and asked to photograph him. And so they worked together and um, worked on this project together. And it's his, those images are beautiful. They're very touching. There's um, not a lot of kind of in your face toughness about it where you kind of want to cover your eyes it's just it's Mm -hmm. all very beautifully done and um he was able to really capture the moments of time with him and it was similar to maya's in the fact again that it wasn't as documentary and again you know with where i work with national geographic i'm always surprised at what i'm drawn to um, but then our 2020 grantee, um, who is a photographer from Iran, Jalal, and his is black and white gritty work of his father. And he, um, did it. I don't know if it started with diagnosis, but definitely during his dementia, he had, um, does he have Pick's disease? I cannot remember now. Um, but it was t- a form of Alzheimer's and, he documented it to to his death and it was done in a documentary form gritty black and white some beautiful images some difficult to see and i just love how and each some personal one and different. some not and yet you know yeah i mean then there's a big difference it's, obviously but what do you want people to take away when you when, if you you want people to, to look at these essays and say what 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 is there a takeaway that you want Um, That's a good question. Yes, in the fact that I want people to truly, I want people to understand what Alzheimer's is. And I think visual storytelling can help that. So it is going to make people understand it, um, be more empathetic to it, and care more about people living with it, those who are who have family members and then want to help and give back and donate and through donation and through support is how we find a cure. And, um, yeah. So then our third year in 2018 was Stephen Dorado who had been photographing his father for like 20 years with a large format camera and just doing family portraits and self, you know, self portraits. And so he had been, photographing his father when he was, and then he was diagnosed and he just continued. And it is such a beautiful project because it's so, um, 
such a time span on it and it's called with dad and his he applied for the grant in hopes to publish a book which he did and oh, we were wow. really excited it's called with dad by Stephen dorado and we were very you're excited amazing about look what you did you you facilitated that yeah yeah that's I awesome hope, i hope so and then i'll just go to our 2019 grantee um sophie matheson hers was on her grandparents and so what is that Three of the five grantees have been about a family member. She Sophie did it on her grandparents, right? Yes, her grandfather. And so, her grandfather. And her and, grandmother, who was his caregiver. Right. And so, you know, I, I love that because it, it shows that, that this disease doesn't just affect older people. It affects everybody, you know. It's, yes. It, it, yeah. So that's really wonderful that you highlighted her. Yeah. 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 Before this had ever existed and you put the word out, did you know if anyone had already had photographs or, the, or, or had, was everyone just doing it because of this or, or did so, anyone submit that? Yeah. Good question. The grant is for existing work. So they could have, well, I doubt it. They heard from it, heard about it in August and then started a project that quickly. So it is for existing work. So the grant is to help get it published to, well, to help finish it, get it published, hopefully in a book form or to help exhibit it. So it's not to start the work. However, I would uh, love to start a grant for an emerging photographer to begin a project on this. And we have done other things. We've given scholarships to, we work with the, um, um, a workshop, the Foundry Photojournalism Workshop, and we have given scholarships where we pay for airfare and uh, registration for non-Western photographers. So we have um, given scholarships to a photographer in Mexico, Bangladesh, and India to work on stories. And those were, I think, one of the workshops was in India and one was in, I forget if it was Kenya. Um, and that is to work on a project for the week at their workshop and then have a small body of work. And then we get those images for social media. But we are able to send these photographers who may not be able to get to a workshop across the world and work with amazing photographers and on a project like this. So we've done the scholarship. And then last year we did a photo contest for people living with dementia. And it was called Still Living. And it was for stills, for photo stills, and still living that people, it's usually obviously in um, early onset, but people who have been diagnosed with dementia still contribute to society. They still have a voice. I mean, until it obviously progresses where they aren't able to um, speak for themselves. But we wanted to highlight the people who are living with it. And so we did a contest worldwide. We got about... 50 submissions, I think. And we chose three winners and we gave them $500. And the reason why I wanted to do 500 was um, for tax purposes. I didn't want to ask an older person with dementia for social security number, their home address. So, but I wanted to reward them and give them something that was mm -hmm. theirs and not just the money, but the win, you know, those th that they want it. And we had someone from France, Canada, and the U.S. And I had people, I had a gentleman who has who lives with the disease and he's quite active and he didn't win. And he's like, I didn't care that I didn't win. I picked up a camera, which I hadn't done in years. I took pictures because the theme was what inspires you, what brings you joy. And he thanked me for getting him back into photography and giving him something to look forward to. And I love that. And we wanted to do it again this year, but with COVID, it was nice. not doable. But I hope yeah. to do that again. The um, I noticed there's captions under the photos. Now, is that part of the submission or is that done after the fact? And it, and it does it come into play as far as like what they say? Is that come into play when you're judging? Good question. So we have two people from our board, Sarah Lean, who's the former director of photography for National Geographic Magazine, and Chip Somadavia, who's a Getty staff photographer in Washington, D.C. And our, I have another um, board member, but she doesn't want to do the judging. So we have a guest judge each year. So it's three judges. And we've had the director of photography for Washington Post, um, NPR, AARP, for the Chris Hondros Fund. 
So we've been very fortunate in that. And what we look at, we really, because these are people who love photography, we really do look at the photographs and how it's the story and how it's edited, how it's sequenced, because the work is just, I mean, there is some really strong work. So when it gets down to like the last three or four and they are powerful, they really then look at, okay, look how they sequence this, look how they edited it. But then we read their proposals and what they want to do with the, with the grant. We don't necessarily read the ca photo captions. I mean, we read them, but those don't usually have as much saying they might help explain an image, but the image should speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. But the proposal is important. And um, like this year's Jalal, and I should have said um, his last name should, I, I stumble on it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Shams Azarin. And like I said, he's based in Iran. I have yet to speak to him. He doesn't speak English. So we speak through his agent in Canada. Um, but he wants to create a book for his father. And um, I hope he is able to do that. And I hope that we, what we award him helps him with that. So um, yeah. Wow. That's is there, is there a, a minimum or a maximum of photos that are submitted? Yeah, we ask for yeah. up to 25 um, mm -hmm. and not more than that. And I think up to 500 words. Um, we've had to tweak it every year because every year I learn something. But I will say the one thing that just amazes me every year, and this is not a, a positive, how many people submit their project with no name, no email, and no phone number? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. They have a name a name, no, e no way to contact them. So I do searches on um, social media to try to find right. them, wow. but try to find a Chris Jones. I mean, that is not easy. Um, no, they're artists. Has a... They're artists. Yeah. Oh, they're artists. Gosh. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's I the thing. That's why I was them. saying you, yeah, you are. That's why it's so wonderful to have some uh, a conduit like you, Yeah, you know, so, I'm, I'm interested. I have a question about the, the, um, the, the people that were, are living with Alzheimer's that you've had, you know, that I think that's so extraordinary. There was a man that was at one of the facilities that my mom's at was at who was clearly an artist. And, um, he walked around with a pen in his pocket, a sketch pen and paper and sketched the entire time. I still oh. have his sketches. He's passed away since. And he was, he, he came in and he seriously had, he looked like, you know, Jack Kerouac. He was just like this, you know, just sixties, yeah. this like, and he was stunning. And he always had a, you know, his glasses and his cool jacket on and you watched him slip away. But I would see him look at the horrible art that was, you know, like probably like store bought, you know, paper, whatever posters that was up there and tears would come to his eyes because it just was so offensive to him, you know, mm -hmm. because it was like, it's like where he had ended up. And then I, I, I could see that because he didn't articulate that much. Right. Don, remember he used yeah. to get very yeah. teary eyed. Like I would hug him because he needed it. And yeah. he would look at me and just so sad. And I said, I know it's horrible art, but you are an artist. That, and I yeah. said, you're the, you're the only one that sees that. And that's what makes you special. Yeah. You don't, oh, that's no so one else. Sweet. Yeah. And, and he, he gave me some of his sketches that were so, you know, and that was what, and I kept telling when I would go to the facility, I'd say, why doesn't he have, you know, the, he needs paper. Please provide him with paper at all times. Cause that is the, that is his, his yes. whole point of, you know, that is what gets him up in the morning. Mm -hmm. the one of the, one of the winners, she, the one from the U S from Massachusetts, I think. Yes. She, um, has Alzheimer's and she started a kayak club at her <clears> local, <throat> I don't know, boat house. And <laughs> I love that she did that. I love that she started a kayak club and <laughs> she goes. And so her photo was of her sitting in the kayak, but she took it of the tip of the kayak um, on a lake and it was beautiful. But I just love how active she is and um, still living. And that is what I wanted to highlight. God bless you for thinking of that and for giving them a purpose and, and a way to express still. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's I'll really say, lovely. I met a woman with Alzheimer's at um, an Us Against Alzheimer's um, conference. And I met with her and her husband in New York for breakfast one day when I was in New York and they had approached me about this. So I, you know, it was their suggestion and she ah. did apply and, um, 
but I was really glad to do it and want to do more things. I mean, they, you know, were, they were our fiscal sponsor, Us Against oh, Alzheimer's. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah, love them. Yeah, they're a great organization. And mm -hmm. again, like I've gone to the conference every year and I just never thought I'd be doing that. Um, but you just meet so many interesting people and people, people are doing just such different things mm -hmm. for this disease in so many different ways from what we're doing with the grants to, you know, it's just, it's fascinating. It's a great community. It really is a great community. When we can't come up with the cure, you, you find any way you can mm -hmm. to support or have a voice or, you know, uh, because, make the journey better. Yeah. To make the yeah. So because better. I like because we, make we're not going to physically find the cure. So let's, yeah, you, I think yeah. And it's created a community uh -huh. of people who have never met each other Absolutely. and have, don't know each other's stories. And yet we all feel like they're part of this family. Well, I yeah. have met and I have met more people and hugged more strangers by doing our <laughs> film all over the world and cried with people that I didn't even know. Yeah. And literally they would come up to us after they screened the film and would go and just hug us and cry. And then I would cry, we'd cry. And men would say, I, I wasn't going to, I didn't think I was going to, I'm like, cry. Yeah. It's good for you. It's good for you. Yeah. A photographer in the UK named Paul John Bayfield, he had submitted to the grant once or twice and it's, it's lovely work of his mother, but it just wasn't there yet. And I had met him at National Geographic. Um, we met and sat down and talked and he is in his late thirties and he's the sole caregiver of his mother. He is a freelance photographer and has had to give up a lot to take care of her. And he has to turn down a lot of assignments because he can't afford to have someone come in. Mm -hmm. So we spoke at length. And when I was, when I met with him, he had a, his arm in a sling because he had to sh shower with his mother and he had fallen in the shower with her and oh had, I don't think he broke his arm, but and he, they didn't have family or very close friends where they lived. So he really was the sole caregiver. So this was um, beginning of January and he was in town for a, a geographic conference. And I quickly spoke to a couple of our board members and said, can we give him some, some financial assistance? And Sarah Lee, the director of photography said, well, why don't we give him a grant and have it be a mentorship grant and all mentor oh. the project because Sarah <gasps> had recently retired. So, and the work is really strong. And um, when she was diagnosed, he was traveling on an assignment and flew home and they discussed, why don't we start documenting this? So they really started it together at diagnosis. At that time, Paul's mom was in kind of a a rehab home, but was about to be released and go back home. And she had Pick's disease and COVID hit and they wouldn't release her. And he was not prepared to have her in this home. So what happened was the home would call Paul and say, your mom's not eating. And he, she would always eat for him. So they had her near a window. That's where her bed was. And he brought a card table, chair, a tablecloth, a vase, and a plate. And he wouldn't just bring McDonald's. He would bring a meal and sit with fork and knife and eat outside her window, and that would get her to eat. So they would eat together. Mm -hmm. And he went once or twice a day and did this. And it's and then took portrait. He did self-portraits of it. And he, the first time he sent it to me, I said, do not publish this. I'm going to send it to Geographic. And they did a story on it for COVID and wow. it's just beautiful work. Oh my and God. So he's continued working on it. And sadly his mom passed away in oh. October. And so he literally has documentation from diagnosis to death and it's, you know, been very wow. difficult on him, but he's continuing the work as he goes through her belongings. He's doing still lives of her, of her things. And that's what he's still working with in the mentorship program. But he had posted some work online and he's gotten a ton of press, which is wow, great because that's mm -hmm. what, I mean, he wants to, yeah. Wow. That's, that's powerful. That's so powerful. It's powerful. And it's so hard, this whole COVID thing, because, you know, I, I did a video 
to send to um, Gavin Newsom because, you know, it, it was becoming very apparent that I may not see my mom ever again in person, you know, because God knows we're on borrowed time. At, you know, we don't have time to waste. And, you know, there's, I was keeping up on all over the COVID situation all over the world and seeing that people in Brazil had concocted this thing where they could put their arms through plastic so that at least they could go and touch and hug, yes. you know, and, and I said, you know, and my mother, a friend of my, of mine, her mother passed away while in care because, you know, it, people that are not used to being isolated are isolated. And that mm -hmm. is, that is worse than anything. And, and they so, don't understand it. And they, the people they don't living with it have it. no idea what COVID is. Yeah. No. COVID for people in homes, um, whether it's it, for it, memory care or any, it's just, it's been heartbreaking. It's um, tragic. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's probably more people than not that are not professional photographers who don't have great equipment, who don't, when, when you get submissions, I mean, I know that the quality of the photographs you can tell is very important because they're remarkable. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely stunning. Have you ever considered uh, a, an essay that was just, you know, could have been done with an iPhone? The photographs were not that great, but they were so powerful yeah. that you were considering? Well, the only way I've thought about that is for an emerging photographer, but that's still someone who wants to become a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. Um I haven't because I just don't know how to monitor that. Meaning what if someone who is a professional and, but sends in pictures on their iPhone. When I first thought of doing this, I thought I didn't really think of, I would know some of the photographers again, luckily I don't judge it. Um, but I thought, oh, I want to find the small town newspaper photographer in small town Iowa who did a story and I want to give that person a grant. That hasn't happened yet, but mm -hmm. it will. So, and I want to go it back will. to how I said I don't judge. So this year with COVID, I could have done it remotely um, through Zoom, the judging part, but one of our judges, Chip Somadavia, he covered the campaign and getting him to like sit still with me for four hours was going to be close to impossible because he was full on campaign mode and then, you know, the election and all that. So it was a little up in the air what we were going to do. And then one of um, Sarah lean, my other judge moved to Maine and they were still in the very beginning of moving. So I just had a local photographer, um, Jared Soros, who is a documentary photographer based in DC. He came over, we social distance wore our Bob and Diane fun masks and we <laughs> judged. I let, he, he really did the judging. He asked me my input on some of them, but he is the one who chose the winning, um, work. But so this year I was probably a little bit more involved than I have been in previous years. Previous years, I stay quiet. I'm in that room and I don't make a peep. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, pick her, pick her. And they'll <laughs> pick someone else. But I, you know, I trust them a hundred percent and I've loved everything that's been chosen, but I do try to, um, not, yeah. Be. So how about how about a traveling uh, uh, museum like something exhibit. where you oh, exhibit I where you would love to, um, you know, at the time, I just didn't have the wherewithal to uh -huh. create something like that. But Photoville, which is based in um, Brooklyn, has approached me about doing an exhibit, which I think I'd like to for next year because it's an August, September is Photoville. And that will be just before we even judge the sixth year grantee, but I'll have five years body of work that I would love to be able to exhibit. And then I think once I get that under my belt, I'll know how the, I mean, I know how the ex exhibition world works, but whether I've got the time and the wherewithal to do it. So I need yeah. to, I think I wanted to have five years under my belt. Yeah. Um, I say the same with um, big donors, like going out for looking for big donors. Now I haven't because I'm trying to do my taxes properly without <laughs> messing up for five years straight. I have yet to do that. So <laughs> it's not easy. You no, know, when, this is not my area at all. So I when I have you, one, <laughs> one year of not messing up on anything, I will <laughs> then take on the next thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. When you're, when your judges judge, is there a criteria or is it just impact? Are they, or is there a certain 
are there certain things that that a photograph or or a or an essay has to have, or is it just like that's the one that hit me? Yeah, gosh, um, because you know I definitely watch them judge, and I'm there on the discussion. I I that's hard to say. So most I think every year it will get come down to like two, maybe three. And those last two or three can be an hour or more discussion. And it could go either way. And um, I tend to still say they really look at the photography and the presentation of it. There's an actual specific story that they're telling them. Well, we hope so. It's probably more of what is going to receive the grant because of what I want it to represent for the fund and what I want people to learn about. Um, Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say in our rules that it has to be a story, but that tends to be a little bit more of what we're looking for. I'm so excited that we got to have you as a guest and I, I know more about you. I had no idea like what it's so, it's so authentic and, and the, 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 the motivation behind it is, is, so moving. I don't cry that easily. I'm very, I'm very callous now about this whole. <laughs> You're so <laughs> used that, to, you yeah. Just, you just moved me so much today. Oh, like I'm just so, so moved by, yeah, yeah, so much. So before I forget, it's Donald Graham. He's an amazing photographer that did the, the, okay. um, the whole thing I'm look him up. For, called, yeah. you know, we can face this together. He did beautiful, beautiful. Well, and they just resonate and they're just moving and, um, you know that, that it's it's in your it's up your alley, and I think I he, will definitely. I think um, he writes. I think he shoots for Vanity Fair and all kinds of. Okay. You know, he and his wife's his wife who's young, her mother she's a ballerina, and her mother also had early onset. Yeah. So that because of that, he felt very very yeah. you know um, uh, emotional about it. So. Thank you so much. We're going to thank sh- you. You know what? Before we, but yeah. before we, is there anything else you want yes. to say yes. or let us know? Or I just want to thank you again for having me as your guest, and I just want to encourage your audience to go on our website, the Bob and Diane Fund org, and go under the grantee section and look at the work. It's just, and we have each year's winners um, and the um, still living pictures. But and if you you know want to donate, you know every dollar helps for us to get this work out there again I, I so we usually receive work from 20 this year was 27 countries and this is worldwide our um 2020 grantee from iran 750,000 people living with the disease in that country and we need to do what we can to stop this and find a cure yes and you're not and really it's such a great cause because you're not only getting the word out and in a beautiful way about alzheimer's and dementia but you're also supporting you know burgeoning artists which is so lovely it's so hard for artists to find a very difficult time yes that's really what started this whole thing Right? No, it's so it's, it's such an extraordinary thing that you're doing. And I, I, I personally thank you so much. And I'm in awe. And, um, you know, you just are an inspiration. And I want to say thank you to Don, who now is on episode number four. He's, he's doing I'm amazing. I'm a veteran now. Yep. <laughs> and I want to thank the audience for, you know, supporting us and for loving us and for sharing this. And we can, we will continue to bring you the best people in this community and you will see what a great village it is. And you have so much support and we love you. With that, we say, remember that love is powerful. Love is contagious and love conquers all. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.